community. And so this familiar passage of scripture is found in 1 Peter uh, 2 and 9, and it reads in the Amplified, but ye, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people. You're not just any run-of-the-mill people to God, but you are a special people. Amen. For God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues of, and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Somebody say, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Uh-huh, it's about to get lit up in this place. Amen. Well, Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would just, oh God, speak through this vessel. Oh God, I pray now, God, that this word, oh God, will bring us into a place of being and becoming. God, it is a simple word. Your word is simple, but it is truth, God. And I just thank you today for every heart that is open to receive it, for every, oh God, ear that is open to hear it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And for every person under the sound of my voice, we just thank you for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. As you take your seat, come on, touch somebody say, live is the light. Live is the light. Live is the light. Live is the light. Hallelujah. God is so good in this place. I don't know about you, but when Pastor just uh, gave us that scripture in Amos, I felt like running. And y'all didn't respond like I thought y'all would have responded to that. I, I, I don't know, but, but has anybody ever been in need of something? Has anybody ever been in really down in need of something? And the Bible said things are going to happen so fast it's going to make your head swim. You needed God to come through so fast it made your head. He knocked your socks off. Ooh, I'm excited just about that scripture, praise God. But, but we're here in 2020. 2020. And we declare, it's crazy, I know that's right. And we declare that this year is the year of manifestation. And I truly believe that this year, that amen, we're going to see some things that we haven't seen before. I believe this year there are going to be some blessings, amen, that are coming our way that we weren't expecting. There are going to be some houses. There are going to be some miracles. There's going to be healing. There's going to be radical life transformation, amen. The testimonies, amen, of the favor of God are going to be so thick in this house, amen. It is going to blow our minds but also what has been really really settling in my spirit is that this year of manifestation will be a year of us being manifestation is the proof and the evidence amen or the becoming amen or the showing or the disclosure of truth and so not only this year are we going to be blessed amen but this year we're going to be evidence in the earth amen I don't know about y'all, but I'm preaching already. This year of manifestation is a year of us being, not just receiving. It is going to be us, amen, being in a state of isness, if I could make up a word, the state of isness that is evident and obvious and plain for everyone to see. It is the pulling of God's likeness, amen, the clear evidence of him living in our lives, amen, out of our lives, not pulling something down out of the sky. Somebody shout manifestation. When I think of manifestation, I begin to consider Jesus, amen, the isness of God, amen. He is the manifest presence of God in the earth. His nature, his character, his power, his anointing, his authority was evident in the earth for all to see. And everywhere he went, he took the fragrance of his father with him. And I've come to declare to you today that everywhere we go, the spiritual DNA of our father should be making a clear and defined imprint in the earth. Jesus said that if you've seen me, you've seen if you see me, you see the Father. And I don't know about you, but it's evident in my house that if you see my children, you've seen their father. Everywhere my oldest daughter goes, she said, you look, somebody tells her, you look familiar. So every, everywhere she goes, somebody is pinpointing who her daddy is because she looks so much like her daddy. Uh-huh, just a little softer, but sometimes I say that uh, she's her daddy with Brazilian hair. But she looks a little softer. My baby don't have a beard, praise the Lord. 
And if you look at my son or if you see our son, amen, and he's walking about, you say that he walks just like his daddy. They pigeon-toed and bow-legged everywhere they go. I say sometimes they're walking in circles, but I love to watch my man walk. Okay, never mind. But if you see them when they're walking together, you say that's got to be his daddy. And I come to tell you that him, that pastor, walks just like his daddy. And I could just imagine that his daddy walked just like his daddy. That's just how DNA works, amen. And you could go to your hometown and somebody could see your face in the store and say, ain't you that Thompson man? Ain't the Thompson your family? Aren't you related to the Jones family? Aren't you related to the Green family? That's just how DNA works. And I've come to tell you there's a deposit that has been made in each of our lives and that we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been branded to make a difference in the world. And when the world sees you, they should see the Father. Look at somebody and say your presence is important in the earth. Your presence is important in the earth. Let's look at another familiar passage of scripture. It's in Matthew 5 and 13. This is where the, Jesus has the sermon on the mount. And after, amen, you go down to 13, the Bible declares that you are the salt of the earth. I did a, a little discovery on salt. What is salt? We know that salt is, has its flavoring properties. And if you're a child in the South with nothing to do on a rainy day, you know that salt could dry up, amen, snails outside. I know I ain't the only one that used to go outside and salt up a few snails, amen. But how many know that, amen, that salt was used to seal covenants? Salt was used as a disinfectant. And sometimes, amen, that the people of God would put salt in the offerings that they put up to God because it spoke of the purity and the preservation and of the expense. And sometimes it was used even as payment. Regular old salt was used as payment. And then from that premise, it gives us the word salary. Because it was a value. You got salt in your pocket. <laughs> because of your salary it was a value commodity it wasn't just common but it had weight to it somebody say it had weight to it it was valuable and so in 13 it says you are the salt of the earth that you means that it is exclusive that you are the only person you are the only people you are the only nation the kingdom nation that is the salt of the earth Without you in the earth, there is no preservation. Without you in the earth, there is no flavor. Without you in the earth, there is nobody to bring, amen, what the earth needs, amen. Because the earth is rotten. The earth is decaying. It, the, moral, the moral fibers are diminishing day by day. And we're deposited in the earth to preserve what the Lord wants to be preserved in the earth. Jesus talks to Saul in Acts 26, and it's, he says that you are to tell the world what you have seen and what I will show you in the future. See, and, and it goes on to say, I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes. See, you're in the earth so that you can open somebody's eyes so they can turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins and forgiveness for their sins and be given a place among God's people. So see, you aren't just saved just to be saved. But when you come into the place, when you let your salt be a man administered to the lives of people, they can turn from darkness to light. Amen. Somebody shout darkness to light. People are trapped all over the world, but you can make a difference. Amen. I put on here that salt sitting in the Morton box has no power. It's only when you sprinkle that salt out does it do a little trick. Amen. Any, any cooks in the house? I know I got a couple cooks. Amen. I've tasted some of y'all food and y'all can throw it down. And y'all know when y'all putting it together, putting it together, it's just got to taste just right. And you know, somebody say, just put a little pinch of salt in it. Just, just put a little, not too much, but just put a little pinch of salt in it. And when it's just right, you'll be like, oh yeah, it's ready now. 
Oh, yeah, that macaroni and cheese going to be a hit at the barbecue. Amen. Them greens going to be bomb because I just put just the right amount. And so God is saying to us right now that instead of just sitting back in the old Morton soap box, that he needs you to pour yourself out a little bit. Amen. He needs you just to sprinkle yourself all over this world. He needs you, amen, not to be shame about it, but to be about it, about it. He said it's time for you to get up and pull yourself out hallelujah it's time to pull yourself out we can't sit by idly and watch the loss just stay lost we have a responsibility to transform the environment in which we work in in which we live in amen everywhere you go there's an opportunity for change to happen change just doesn't happen just because you got a pastor change happens because you are the priest because you are the prophetess, because you are the teacher, because you are the, amen, the carrier of the anointing. Touch somebody and say, I carry an anointing. Another powerful nugget on that salt. He didn't say you were something like salt. He says that you already are salt. By his marvelous grace, there's a transformation that has taken place in your life. Amen. By the new birth and by the leading of the Holy Spirit so we can walk this thing out. You're not by yourself. There's a Holy Spirit deep down on the inside of you giving you everything you need, amen, to bring it forth, amen, when it's time to minister. Some people don't minister or some people don't talk about, amen, the love of the Lord because you think your testimony is small, praise God. But amen, if you just begin to tell about how God brought you out and what God did to in your life, amen, somebody will see God, amen, in your testimony. You don't have to be a great wonder. You don't have to have your name, amen, written on somebody's door. You just have to be salt in the earth. Hallelujah. Function in the earth. Jesus has given you everything that you need to live this life. But the rest of verse 13 says that you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, its purpose, and I put on here, has no credibility, how can it be made salty? You can't make salt salty. Salt just is. Just like Alaska's just cold. It just is. We thankful, amen, when it was warm a little bit, but, but, but Alaska is meant to be cold. It is what it is. But it is no longer good for anything. So when you lose the anointing, when you lose your, your credibility, when you lose the, the identity of your purpose, I didn't say it, but the word said it is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and walked on. You know how we walk on that salt and we track it in the church? Everybody be like, uh-huh. It make my age of orange act up just a little bit. When, uh, and, and pastors too, when we pull up to the church and the and the maintenance people have just piled so much salt in front of the door because it tracks in and it gets on everything. But you need that salt. You need it. You need it to melt the ice. But how many know, praise God, that it is not as expensive as it could be because of mixture? It's on the ground because of mixture. They mix it with another substance so it can be useful for the ground. Somebody shout mixture. Mixture is combining multiple things together, but I come to tell you that mixture is dangerous to the believer. Mixture is a surefire way to lose your saltiness. Instead of just being salt, you mixed up like Johnny Season salt. I had to look that thing up. Johnny Season salt is real good, but I didn't know that it had salt, it had sugar, it had paprika, it had garlic powder, it had garlic salt, it had onion powder, and it had pepper. Now, garlic, pepper, salt, okay, that's salt. But I thought that ju just, just salt, it's, it's seasoning salt. But it has so much in it that because there's a mixture. But see, I've come to tell somebody that in our lives, we can't have mixture. It can't be Jesus and everything else. We can't have Jesus and say we live in by faith and then we looking up our horoscopes every morning talking about what does my horoscope say today? We can't have Jesus and then somebody be like, Pastor, what's your horoscope? What's, wait a minute, what's your zodiac sign? I, I, I remember what it was, but I'm not telling you because I don't live by that. And I don't want you telling me, well, today this says this. Uh -huh, y'all thought I was going to tell y'all what it was. I'm not telling you because I don't want Jesus and my zodiac sign. 
Come on now. We can't say that we got Jesus and we dibbling and dabbling in vulgarity. We gotta, these mouths got to be cleaned up. Amen. It can't just be my, 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 my Facebook can't just have all kinds of stuff on it. And we say these is just jokes. Y'all know, I, oh, it got quiet up in here. We was having a good time a few minutes ago. Our Snapchats that come on for a second and then delete itself. Hallelujah, because these is just jokes. But are they really just jokes? We, you, we so slick now, we're using acronyms for cuss words. Uh-huh, LOL. Uh-huh. I ain't going to go down where, where what, I, what I read, but you know, it messes me up because when I find out what it is and now when I read it, I can't help but to read it like it's supposed to be read. And then it makes me upset because I want to live for Jesus. I don't have time to be mummering and, and got curse words floating around in my head. So saints, could y'all please clean it up? Look at somebody and say, clean it up. I'm going to move on because y'all didn't seem to like that. Okay, all right. We got Jesus, but we curse a little bit. We got Jesus, but we smoke a little weed. We got Jesus, but we like to sleep around because everybody need love. I, I want Jesus, but I got hate in my heart. I want Jesus, but I'm discriminant against everybody. I, I, I want Jesus, but I'm unloving. Come on, that's mixture too, not just the stuff we can see on the outside. Some of us got a little inside mixture that we need to, amen, uproot and kick out of our lives. Praise the Lord. You may not be caught up in that outside stuff, but what does the inside look like? The Bible clearly talks about no mixture, that we can't serve two masters, that we're supposed to love the Lord God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, everything about us should love the Lord. We should give our full attention. 1 John 1, 6 says, if we claim that we have fellowship with him, but keep living in darkness, we lie. Mm. These, the, the word of God is so tight. And I can feel us tightening up, so I'd be like, just say, ouch, hallelujah, and just keep on rolling. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, live in darkness, act like we're of darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Ephesians 5 and 11 says, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. We know the works of the flesh have nothing to do with it. So no mixture. We can't even play a little bit because the enemy plays for keeps. We can't play around because you can go out there for a little bit and might not make it back. Just because you made it back one time doesn't mean that you're going to make it back every time. It's by the grace of God that we made it back. See, I'm not going to just say you, just me. It's by the grace of God that I made it back because I accepted the Lord at one time and then I turned my back on him, praise God, but he got my attention and I turned around and I've been running for him ever since. But see, it wasn't a man because of anything that I did, but it was all because of him and by his grace. Tomorrow is not even promised to us. We don't have any time to play around. Some people say, I'll, I'll get saved when I get a little older. Or I'll get saved when I get this together. Who knows if you'll have the opportunity? People are dying younger and younger every day. And the young people think that Jesus is just for the older people. But it's for all of us. Living for the Lord is for all of us. He has given us an opportunity that we can escape the punishment, amen, of death and separation from him. And it's just not for the old people because when we think about that, the young people aren't making it to be old people anymore. They're not, they, they not making it. Oh, wait a minute, we're not making it. I'm young. We're not making it to be old anymore. We got to do this thing and be real about it right now. It's the small things that can kill our witness. It says the very appearance. That's a small thing. The very appearance of evil, we should not even be a part of it. The small things can separate us from the love of God. It says the small foxes that destroy the vine. The little leaven that leavens the whole thing. Just a little bit can destroy the whole thing. 
Does anybody, I got, I got little is little, but it can be deadly. Does anybody watch Dr. Pimple Popper? I heard, ooh, I heard, yes. By the show of hands, who watched Dr. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay, I'm not by myself. I know I heard the ooh. It is nasty, but I can't help but to watch it. <laughs> ain't nobody killing, ain't nobody cussing, ain't nobody fighting. I just, they just popping bumps, and so I just watch it. I got grossed out, and when I don't want to see, like, what's really going on, I turn my head, but then I open my eye because I really want to see it, but I really don't, but I like the show anyway. So I watched Dr. Pimple Popper, and on this episode of Dr. Pimple Popper, this man, see y'all laughing, y'all don't watch the show? Y'all need to watch the show. Cause see, it'd be the same people that don't watch the show walk around with a bump on y'all for 15 years, and y'all could have knew automatically to go get that bump removed, and then y'all wouldn't be walking around here to my pray for this bump. You saw you had the bump, get the bump, take it off your back. Okay, so Dr. Pimple Popper, a man came in, and he had a big growth on his nose. And immediately she walks in, and if you got something big, she already knows what the problem is. It's like, duh, you got a big bump on your nose. So this is why you're here. So came, saw the big bump on his nose, and she was just talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, talking to him. But all the while she was talking to him, this little bump under his eye got her attention. And so she did all the little things that she had to do. She did the surgery on the nose, but after she got finished with the surgery on the nose, she's like, sir, you've got this little spot up under your eye and it's concerning me, so I think we ought to do a test on what's under your eye. Say small thing. Big thing was the nose, small thing was the bump. She did the surgery on the large thing, did the test on the smaller thing, the test came back for the smaller thing that it was cancerous. You would have thought that the larger thing that was on his nose that was bringing him so much discomfort was the root of cancer or could have possibly been cancerous tissue. And so I'm here and if you take it off, I won't have cancer anymore. But it was that small thing. So, so I'm going to come to tell somebody, don't just, amen, think just because it's small that it doesn't have, may not have a big implication on your life. That small bump that he didn't even think about was cancerous sitting on his face. So that small thing that you're allowed let slip in your life this time that lie that you tell this time that promiscuity that you do this time is that small thing that can be big in your life and can separate you from the love of God forever because it's not meant for everybody to come back even the places that we go can affect our witness I know you witnessing in the club I can wait, I, just because I'm here don't mean I'm just because I'm going don't mean I, what does it mean? Many of you heard a story that I've shared a couple of times about this young lady that was in my, in my squadron and she would say to me, well, when I came here, I've been here 27 years, I'm talking to Gerard because you don't really know my whole story, they know my story, you knew here, so I'm telling you. So, <laughs> uh, we've lived here now 27 years, and so when we got here, we weren't always saved. Anybody moved to Alaska or not one saved? Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How many in Alaska ain't saved now? Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Pastor, I'm looking at them now so we can get them saved before church over. Uh, and so she would always say to me, come to church with me. Come to church with me. All during the week, come to church with me. And I'm like... Okay, yeah, okay, come to church with you. And then on Saturday, <laughs> why do I want to come to church with you and you out here with me I, you already know I'm not saved. You already know that I wasn't trying to hear about what you had to say about Jesus. But you, because of the mandate on your life, you want to witness to me because God said that you are salt, so you can't help but to be who you called to be. 
because if I'm salt, I can't help but to open up my mouth and tell you about Jesus. So because you are the salt, you want to say, come to church with me, girl. But what happens on Saturday when you out there? Boom, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. What happens to your witness? How salty are you in the club? And I'm not talking about being attitudinal because somebody stepped on your shoe or because they said last call for alcohol. I'm just, I'm sorry. For y'all that don't know me, I keep it real. I keep, I keep it simple, but I keep it real. All right? What happens to our saltiness then? It's mixed. It's the mixture. You can't have the kingdom and the world. We're in the world, but we're not of it. You can't do this and do that, dabble here, dabble there, and think you're going to maintain your anointing. We should be changing the culture, not mimicking the culture. The culture is perverse. It's glued together by instability. It's got girls walking around being fashionably naked. I got to show my belly button to show how, how gorgeous and cute I am. Cover up that belly button. I want to see your face. Do you got something intelligent to say? I don't need to see you coming with your belly, but I don't want to see your boo bitch. Sorry, men folk in the house. I'm trying to teach our young ladies right now. You can be good looking with your body covered up. You can be classy with your body covered up. I'm looking out at the congregation right now. I got some ladies, we got some women, we got some people the young ladies can look at because we know how to represent, but be covered up. Somebody say cover up. They got the, the, the world is just, just mimicking the church, making fun of the church. Green leaf. All the, whoa, okay. Oh, I'm in the right place then. Alchaluya. All of these shows making a mockery of the sanctity of the church. The church that God died for. Making a mockery of the church. People are murdering, hate crimes all over. Hate is a common thread. Fear producing speech everywhere. You can't turn on nothing without people saying this might happen, that might happen, and we're afraid. Unloving, every work of the flesh is alive and parade. And there's an enemy of this world that's relentless. His job is to steal, kill, and to destroy. He doesn't care if you come to church. He doesn't care if you sing. He doesn't care if you play those instruments over there. He doesn't care if you're greeting somebody at the front door. The only thing that he cares about is if messages are preached like this in the church that calls you to be something other than what the world wants you to be. See, he cares, amen, when you get the revelation that God has called you to be salt in the earth. He cares if you get the revelation that he has power for you in your life, and your life is powerful, and it's more than just clocking in to a nine to five. Do I have a witness in this place? Place. somebody talk back to me don't just look at me and listen talk back to me he don't want you to recognize that you have power and authority then you get up and do be about his business he wants you to be sleep in the church not just sleep physically amen but sleep in the internally sleep in your spirit you know how it is when, it, when you feel an urge to read the word and then next thing you know immediately sleep comes you didn't take a melatonin, you didn't skip a nap, but open that book and all of a sudden you got the itis. Alchaluya. Thank you, sis. Time to pray. You sit down, Father God. And then wake up and be like, I'm sorry, Lord. What I was saying was, been there, done that. But that's what he wants to do. He wants to keep us asleep. He doesn't want us to understand who God has called for us to be in the, in the church, in the world. We're losing our witness. We're becoming complacent. But we have to be the standard bearers. Without us, there is no hope. We are the hope that the world needs. Shout again, no mixture. The second facet of a believer's life is we're to be light. In Matthew 5 and 14, it says, you are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. 
Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Light is illuminating. It's revealing. It's bright. It's wonderful. And you are that light. Again, it's exclusive. You are the light of Christ in the world. And instead of getting lit in the world, it's time for us to get litty in the city. Hey! Instead of us turning up every Friday and Saturday night and being lit in the club, it's time for us to be litty in the city. Somebody shout litty in the city. Not the world's way. I looked that thing up and I'm like, you know, it's about to be church, about to be lit, you know. And, and if you're in the world, hey amen, that means to be drunk. Uh huh. It means to be high on meth. Uh huh. But for us, it's drunk in the spirit. And for us, it's high in the spirit and high off the spirit. So you don't have to be ashamed when you look at somebody and say, I'm going to be litty in the city because the word of God says be light and that you are the light. And when you say I'm litty in the city because God has made me light, just look at them and say, I can't help but to be what I am. I can't help but to be what I am. Anybody can't help but be what they are. Anybody can't help but to be what they are. Many of us can't talk about it. Because, they, the Bible, the, because the world still got us believing in who we once were. And so we have to live spreading the gospel. We spread the gospel of God, which is the power of God unto salvation. And that's got to show through even on our Facebook. I already talked about our Instagram, our Snapchat, everywhere. It can't be hidden. It has to be evident for the world to see. What your life brings to the world is the nature and the character of light, the revealing and to provide understanding and purity. To live as children of the light, we must let the light shine upon us and the light of the spirit penetrate every corner of our lives. Because see, we were once in darkness, amen? You know that, right? Ephesians 5 and 8 tells us that we were once in darkness, or excuse me, we were once sometime darkness. That means that we were trapped by sin. Sin was at work in our bodies. We were sin laden. We weren't just in it, but we actually were it. But now it says that you are children. You are light of the Lord. So walk as children of the light. You are now a regenerated people with a regenerated heart. We're saved. We become new creations in Christ. We're given a light that shines within us and we have four responsibilities found in this passage if I go on. It says the number one is to walk as children of the light. We have to walk the word, be children of truth, ensure our lives reflect the true character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Living like the light looks like something. It sounds like something. It should mimic the deeds and the virtues and the perfections of him that sent us. And it takes an eternal vigilance. You can't say I'm saved today, amen, and not work out your salvation with fear and trembling tomorrow. Every day it should be a working out of your salvation. Every day we should be getting better and better. Every day we should be going higher and higher every day. Not just when you came up and gave a little bit of tears, amen, and you walk out to go and do what you want to do. But after you walk away from this altar, now it's time to get to work. Now it's time to be vigilant and work this thing out. Not seeking after those things that don't feed our spirit or our soul. People have to know that we've been with Jesus. That we know Jesus and that we're known by Jesus. The next one, number two, to know what is acceptable to the Lord. We have to be on the pulse of heaven. Knowing through his word. Walking out the purposes of God in the earth. We got to know without a shadow of a doubt what the Lord is saying to us. I love what Luke 8 and 10, you don't, I don't know if they have it, but, but the Bible declares that for the disciples were asking, you know, why do you give everybody else everything in parables? But he says, you've been given understanding of the secrets of the kingdom. You, not the world, but you. He doesn't just release his secrets to Johnny come lately. Johnny come once in a while. 
the one that's in love with him when everything is going downhill, but he gives out, he gives out secrets to those that love him and love him completely. Y'all know how I love to take selfies, and, 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 and God wants to be so intertwined in our lives that when I take a selfie, it's like I'm taking a ussy because he's so intertwined in my life. It's not just your reflection, but it should be your reflection and the reflection of Christ. Amen. Every time you look at yourself in the mirror, it's not just that little pimple or that little spot or that thing that you don't like about yourself. But when you look in the mirror, you need to look at yourself and I am the salt. I am the light. I am the purpose. I am the anointed. Oh, come on. Somebody testify with me. I am the healed. I am the purchased. I am what God says that I am. Hallelujah. He wants to be so intertwined with us. That we are just seeing ourselves, but we're seeing him when we look at ourselves in the mirror. Number three, he says that we don't have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it. Instead of linking up and coming into agreement, we should be shining our light on what's not good and what's evil in the world. Folks not going to be happy about it. They're going to even say that you're judging. But you're not judging. You're just shedding a little light on the subject. Okay? You, you, you're not judging. You're just, amen, illuminating the situation. Amen. And if you're finding yourself in a fault, be grateful. Be thankful that somebody wanted to shed a little light on it because you could live 20 years going in the wrong direction. I want somebody to correct me. I want somebody to tell me when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. I want somebody to challenge that thought process that I have. Because I want to be right for Jesus. I'm only getting a little bit of help, but I know it's going in. I know it's going in. The enemy wants you to tune this thing out. Oh, but it's going in there. Uh-huh. He wants you to get sleepy. Uh-huh. He wants you to get sidetracked. Uh-huh. But it's going in there. It's exposing that thing even right now. That's why we squirm in church when the word comes. Because it's exposing all that darkness that we got on the inside. It's exposing all that stuff we try to hide. We can come in here suited and booted, but you can't hide from Jesus. We can't hide. We got to stop giving the enemy access. And stop allowing our flesh to dictate our lives, giving us, making us make jacked up choices. You do know that it ain't always the enemy causing us to make jacked up choices, don't you? Ask somebody, say, tell, tell somebody, say, do you know it's not always the enemy causing us to make jacked up choices? Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's us and, and the things that we want to do. The enemy is on vacation most of the time. He trying to sit by the pool, the enemy trying to have brunch, and y'all talking about something, the devil made me do it. <laughs> the enemy is going up to God, be like, would you please tell your people to stop blaming me for all this? <laughs> would you please tell your people to stop saying that I done made them do all this? I didn't do nothing, Jesus. Because it's us. Let's be real. We do what we want to do. Come on, be real about it. We, we, we do what we want to do, and then we be mad about the consequences. Then we, then we, that's when we say, enemy, come and sit on this because the consequence is going to be big. So I'm going to need somebody to blame today. Ouch, hallelujah. Thank you. I love her. I love you. God bless you. Be real about it. When we real about it, we can get fixed. When we real about it, we can get help. When we real about it, God can come in and, and, and clean that area of our lives up. When we submit it to Jesus and stop acting like we got it all together. Hmm. Hmm. Say, hmm. <laughs> it's good. Number four, finally, we should allow God's light to shine through us to show others the way. To open their eyes. The Bible declares in Acts 26 and 18. To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light. I'm just trying to get you to see. Amen. It ain't just about stuff. Manifestation is about being. Yeah. We're here so they can open their eyes and turn from the darkness to light and from the powers of Satan to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's again an inheritance among those sanctified. Any sanctified people in the house? It says in the message that 
I'm sending you off to present my offer of, of sins forgiving and a place in the family. When you extend yourself out, you're allowing others to come in the family. You're allowing others an opportunity to receive what you've received. You're giving people an opportunity to receive the grace and, it may, and to experience the grace that you received. Amen. And just like Jesus, we're in the world not to condemn the world, but through us representing him, the world might be saved. Who you are in the earth gives unbelievers a way to come into the knowledge of Christ. Your life makes a difference. Our witness matters. Someone should see us shining so brightly that they want to mimic our lives. Again, I say you weren't just saved to be saved, but you were saved to be salt and light. But we've got to maintain our saltiness. Some of y'all, some of us like to just be salty for the wrong reasons. <laughs> Nasty for the wrong reasons. Or nasty thinking you got the right reason. But the saltiness, amen, is us delighting in our God. Maintaining our purpose. Maintaining our focus. Pastor said and has been saying for a couple weeks, amen, when will God be enough? We've got to get to the place where we don't just need him in trouble. But love him and need him and adore him and praise him every second, every minute, every hour of the day. Anybody need God like that? Pursue him to get to know him more. Amen. To know him more and more. My soul, amen, longeth after the living God. We've got to know him intimately for ourselves. Not like our grandmamas knew him. Not like our grandfathers knew him. Not like our old deacon that we talk about. But we got to know Jesus for ourselves. Anybody want to know Jesus for themselves? Anybody willing to turn the plate over just to get to know Jesus? Anybody willing to put the knife on themselves? just to get to know Jesus I want to know him somebody just say I want to know him I want to know him just to know Jesus is what I want to do I don't want to be known I don't want to be made famous but our job is to make Jesus famous I don't want my name in lights but it's all about Jesus and making Jesus famous some of you may be happy, amen, with somebody calling you boss, with somebody calling you pastor, with somebody calling you whatever, but I just want to be known by Jesus. I just want to be known by Jesus. I don't want to be known as a great preacher. I don't want to be known even as your wife. I don't want to be known as a pastor of new season. I just want to be known by Jesus. I just want to be known by Jesus. That's the only thing that matters. Some of you might want to be famous. And that's all right. But I just want to be known by Jesus. I just want to know that when it's all said and done, that she knew me. She lived for me. She declared my name. Regardless of what was going on in her life, she declared my name. That she made no reputation of herself, but she declared my name. And that's why you're here to be the light. Not to declare yourself. Not to be this great wonder and this great prophet. If you're a prophet, prophesy. But give God the glory. If you're a preacher, preach. But give God the glory. If you're a singer, sing that song like nobody's business. But give God the glory. If you're a musician... Play, but give God the glory. Because you're not talented and you're not gifted because of you, but because of who God created you to be. They sang up here this morning. I'm going to tell you, they sang this morning. But without Jesus, it's sounding brass and tingling cymbals. Without Jesus, it's nothing. Our Jesus is dumb. Our, not Jesus. Our lives is dumb without Jesus. We're nothing without Jesus. Even on our best day, we're filthy rags. If it had not been for Jesus. Gucci belt wearing and all, if it had not been for Jesus. Prada purse carrying, but if it had not been for Jesus. You might have your red bottoms, but if it had not been for Jesus. Who was on your side, where would you be? I need you just for a few seconds just to lift your hands to Jesus. And just praise him. If it had not been for you, God. If 
it had not been for you, God, we'd be swallowed up. If it had not been for your saving grace, we'd be lost in the sauce. But because of Jesus, I can be lit in the city. I can be salt and I can be light. Hey! Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Somebody say, because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Hey. Hey, I got a little bit more. I just got a little bit. Just a little bit. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. We're not sleeping in a devil's hell. Because of Jesus. We're not swallowed up by our sin nature. Because of Jesus. That mistake I made five or ten years ago didn't take me out of here. Because of Jesus. Because of his saving grace. It's because of Jesus, church. It's because of his power, church. It's because of his authority, church. It's because of his love for us, church. It's because of his anointing for our lives. It's because of his grace. It's because of his grace. It's because of your great grace. Somebody shout great grace. Somebody shout great grace. It's because of your great grace. Ooh. It's because of your great grace. I'm going to close with that right there. I think you get the picture. I think you get the understanding. That our lives are not just for us, but our lives is to glorify Jesus. Our lives is to illuminate the darkness in this world. Our lives is to bring stability and order in this chaotic situation we call living in this world. But the salt and the light is not common but we're called salt and light because we're a peculiar people a royal people a priesthood hey, like no other that we might proclaim the excellencies of our God not to proclaim what we want to proclaim but to proclaim his goodness Proclaim his life, his death, and his resurrection. I'm declaring as I close that 2020 won't just be about getting stuff. That 2020 won't just be about our pockets getting fat and our cupboards filled with plenty. But 2020 will be the manifestation of the sun's because the earth is groaning, hey, waiting for the manifestation of the sons, waiting for the representation of the anointed to rise up and to present themselves. So no more getting lit like the world. No more saying, I would rather do it this way. But what we gonna start doing, say, I would rather do it God's way. Anybody rather do it God's way? I'd rather do it God's way. It's no way, no way but God's way. No other way a man can be saved except by the name Jesus. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. Come on, stand to your feet all over the building.
give God a shout of praise. This is the year of manifestation. This is the year of us being who God said that we are. No more mixture. No more transformers in the church. Too many Optimus Primes and B, B or what is his name? Uh, bugs. Bumblebees. No more transformers. The people formerly known as the church. No more. We will be the church. I'm declaring we will be the church. We might not be the biggest or the best church, but we will be the church. So when God looks down, he say, I see somebody representing or representing me in the earth. And when I look at new season, I know they bout it, bout it. They bout my business. This is the year. Tell somebody, say, this is the year. I'm stepping into my new.